Joining me is New Hampshire Representative Stephen Smith, who's running in the Sullivan County District 11 seat. Um, so Stephen, let's, uh, you know, the next biennium. I think one of the biggest issues is going to have to be the budget. It's Always be the first thing out of the door. Yes. Um, you know, what's your impression of, of where we are? What are the issues around the budget in the next biennium? Well, figuring out what the structural deficit's going to be. The governor was late in getting those numbers to us. Actually, I'm not even sure that we've received them yet. And um, it, it's not new. We always seem to have, although we're required to pass a balanced budget and includes borrowing and there's some discretionary spending, and then there's always this hole in the budget left by the last guys, whoever those folks were. And do we have? A, do you think we have a hole going into the next biennium? We certainly do, um, particularly if you look at the actions coming out of the governor's office with spending and hiring freezes and their statement that there is a problem. And um, the, the, the I, I can't remember the name of the hospital tax, um, that court case, is that, that's going to create, what, a $80 million, $100 million? Yeah. And, 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 and revenue that we, that we can't expect to be used for general operations? Yes, that's another one of those shell games. New Hampshire has a very bad history with medical money, whether it's Medicaid or other federal funds coming in, where um, we put it in one account to qualify for some federal issue. And then as soon as that's done, before the next deadline, you move it over and you're counting the same money twice. We've done a lot of that and, and it does bite us. So we, we do have to get to a point in the legislature where we're honest about the money and use it for the intended purpose. And do you think uh, we're going to be able to hit a budget that works for the people in New Hampshire and the taxpayers without raising taxes? Yes. Without draconian cuts? I mean... Sure. Draconian. Good word. Um, that, that word was thrown around a lot from the 2012 2010-2012 uh, mm -hmm. session, i not exaggerating, saw things that people would die if we passed that budget. It was painful and it was unfortunate. I mean, the, none of us want to take money away from important services, but we spent all the money there was. So, and as far as I know, bodies didn't pile up in the streets. I don't mean to be flip about it, but the rhetoric gets out of hand. Right. And what gets lost in these conversations also is how we got here so that maybe we can not do that again in the, in the next budget cycle. And this last budget cycle is a relatively bipartisan budget. Um, do you think there's going to be a chance for a bipartisan budget in the next one, or will this really be partisan? I, I hope so. I mean, it, it depends. Um, the budget issues become uh, pinatas. So when, when a cut has to be made, if you're in the party that's out of power and you like that program, you, know, you, you build it up good. Well, you hate kids, or you hate women, or you hate this group, and we don't hate anybody. You know, I would, I would love to fund everything there is out there, but the people only have so much money. If the voters in my district say, I'll pay 10% more, and I want to see these things funded, that's a different conversation, but th that's not happening. I think they expect us to be responsible with their money first, and sadly, our legislature has a bad history of that. So um, I want to turn to some other issues. Uh, I think another item I th will be the casino gambling. Mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine it not coming up again. I no. think it's come up every <laughs> biennium for the last six bienniums, or yes. maybe longer. Um, where do you stand on casino gambling? I, uh, well, being a liberty-loving Republican, I don't see why some folks shouldn't be allowed to start a casino if they want. There isn't going to be a casino in my district. So, frankly, I don't care. If Salem wants a casino, who am I to say no? I, I don't live there. I had an 84-year-old woman in my district call me about this, and she said, I'm tired of taking the bus to Uncasville. <laughs> Why can't I just go to a casino in New Hampshire? So uh, I keep getting asked, are you pro-gambling? Are you anti-gambling? I'm neither. I'm for local control. I, the, yeah, the bureaucracy was big, and a lot of people voted against it because of that, and they didn't want the new agencies and, and all the complexities. You've you got to live in the real world. We're going to have that if we want to get this done. I, there's just no way around it. So I say if Rockingham or Loudoun or Coas, where there's nothing much going on up there, if they want to build one, it, I should not be able to have an impact on that. I should allow them to. And uh, do you think it's going to contribute the resources that, uh, that it's been claimed? No, of course not. They never do. When you're trying to sell something, you always start high. But if a municipality wants to do it, Right. And to generate so much as one tax dollar, why is that a bad thing? We, we did have that argument. This, well, you said that it would bring in $30 million to the state, and we looked at these numbers and said it would only be 10. 
okay, why would you not take the 10 million? And if other people are risking their own money, land in their own town, changing their own landscape, and they think this is worth doing, I will not stand in their way. Um, we got about 45 seconds left. You know, there, is there any other one issue that sort of is on the top of your mind? Yes, my socks, okay? I've worked at a lot of places in Sullivan County that have closed. I don't know where people who don't have a degree go to get a job now. So I tell people, you got to buy local, buy American, watch local TV stations like this one. Well, I appreciate that. They, uh, and they say, well, I can't afford the American stuff. Well, I can't either. I get it. It's a tough economy. Some people haven't gotten raises, but my socks were made in America. Now, I don't know what they make on a bag of socks, but if it's 50 cents, if there's 300 million people in this country, most of them wearing socks, I am. Uh, are you wearing socks? Yeah, that's the camera guy, sure. Yeah. If only 100,000 people buy socks and the company makes 50 cents on each one, it's $50,000, that's a salary and benefits, that's a job. Do the little things that you can and you're going to give American jobs back. Just please read the labels. Well, we're not, we're not going to argue with that, but right now we're out of time.